Today we're going to make a custom keyboard. I've shown how to do this before using panels, but that was a few years ago and that was a horrible way to do it, but it was the best we had at the time. Now we're going to do it using look and feel, and it's going to be a much more pleasant process, and it's also going to be a better end result. Let me show you the keyboard. So up at the top here we've got the regular piano keyboard, and down here is the custom keyboard I've made, and you can make this look any way you want, you can make it really extravagant. This is something fairly simple, I've just gone for uh, these triangles, and uh, middle C there marked by the blue triangle, and this should be enough to get you started, and you can use your imagination and take it wherever you want from here. Okay, so let's uh, make a new project and get into it. Okay, so to start with, we'll build our UI. I'm going to put a panel on here. We don't actually need it, but it's going to just provide a background so we can uh, see what we're working with when we remove the background of the keyboard, just so we've got something to contrast against. So just a panel, and I'm going to set the colours to, uh, let's have a sort of green colour. So we set item colour 1 and item colour 2. Ooh, that's horrible, isn't it? A pea green. Let's make it a bit darker. There we go, something like that, just to give us a background. And then we're also going to have a floating tile. This is going to be our standard keyboard. So let's just uh, make up the full width, and we'll select keyboard from the drop down. And let's just have a bit more room here. We don't need this window. And we can change this low key here to be 24, and I'll hit F5 on that. So that's just our standard keyboard that's going to sit on the background, just so we've got something to compare against. And then we're going to add another keyboard, and this is the one we're actually going to style. So we'll make it the same height for now, and we'll set it to keyboard, and we'll set the low key to 24, hit F5. Okay, and we'll just rename this, we'll call it FLT Keyboard. And we'll remove the background colour. So we'll delete that and hit enter. And I'll just hit apply down here to make sure that worked, and refresh our script. There we go. Okay, so nothing's changed so far. If I press keys on my MIDI keyboard, both of these will perform exactly the same at the moment. Let's just make that panel cover the entire area. Okay, so what we're going to use is look and feel. I've shown how to use custom look and feel in other videos. We're going to do this one a little different. We're going to use the local look and feel, which is a relatively new thing that was added to highs, but it's better than the global look and feel. So with global look and feel, you style something and it applies to every single copy of the, that element in your UI. So if you've got a button in the UI and you apply global look and feel to that button, it will apply to all buttons. Same with the keyboard, it would apply to all the keyboards. With local look and feel, we can style individual elements, so we can have a local look and feel that only applies to the one keyboard. So that's what we're going to use. But the process is pretty much the same as a global look and feel. So the first thing we'll do is get a reference to our keyboard, so I'll just right click on there, click create script variable declaration, I'll put a comment. So we've got our keyboard. The other thing I want to do is set all of the keys to have no colour except middle C. By setting the keys to have no colour by default, when we get to the custom look and feel, we'll have a kind of baseline to work from, we'll always know that the keys won't have a colour by default. So that's easy, we're just going to loop from 0 to 127 for every key, and then we'll call engine.setKeyColor, and the key number will be I, and the key colour for no colour, we're just going to put that hex code, which will give us um, essentially a fully transparent colour. And then we'll set middle C to be blue. So this is outside of the loop. Colours dot blue. And you can have any key colours you want if you're using key switches and whatnot, that you, you can apply those colours and they'll show up as well. Um, so just to be clear, this is in the loop. So that's within the loop, and this line is outside of the loop. 
but obviously because this is a one line loop you don't have to have the curly braces but I'll leave them in there just for clarity. So there we can see our middle key has been coloured but the no colour hasn't been applied to any of them uh, but that's okay we just want it like that for our look and feel. Okay so we've got our keyboard now we need to actually make the look and feel function. So we're going to create a new variable we'll call it keyboard laugh laf for look and feel and that's going to be equal to content dot create local look and feel. So this is similar to what we usually do for look and feel but usually just to show you we usually do engine dot create global script look and feel. So that's the difference we're not using the engine function we're using the content one. So this gives us a look and feel object this keyboard laugh object and we can apply this to different controls. So in our case we're just going to apply it to the keyboard but if you had buttons for example and this was a button look and feel we were doing you could apply this one object to a whole selection of buttons. So we'll do flt keyboard dot set local look and feel and then we just give it the name of our object here and I'll hit F5 and nothing dramatic happens yet because we haven't declared our look and feel functions. So the keyboard has three look and feel functions available there's draw keyboard background, there's draw white note and draw black note. We're just going to use the draw white note and draw black note for this video. So keyboard laugh dot register function and we want draw white note there's the draw keyboard background there's draw black note draw white note so I'll hit enter on that and it fills in um, this uh, this function for us and we'll just duplicate that and change this to draw black note let's just give ourselves a little more room here Okay so now when I hit F5 the keyboard, um, the second keyboard, FLT keyboard, it's going to vanish or in this case turn black because we're now pulling from these functions to, uh, to actually draw the keyboard. So let's just see what we get in our OBJ object inside the keyboard look and feel. And I'll hit F5 on this. Let's have a look in the console. So what we get is for every single key, so this is going to go from 0 to 127, we get this object. So we can see we get an area, so this area is the actual area of the key. And you see we've got the X position, the Y position, the width, and the width is the same as we have over here. And there it is the key width. So that's the same as we have here. So if you want to change the width you can change it over here. And the height is 72 which is again actually it's the same as we've got here but plus 2 for some reason. And then the note number 127 hover is um, the hover state of the mouse over the key. Key down is the key pressed. The key color which is 40 and the parent name which the parent name is always blank for the keyboard don't worry about that we don't need it. So this is the same data we get for every single key so if we go up to note number 60 we should see that the key color is uh, there it is so that's the integer value of the hex code for blue because we set it to blue and I've just noticed that um, the last key is actually coming up with a key color of 40 even though we set all the keys to be transparent and the reason for that is because I did less than 127 instead of less than 128. So I'll hit F5 and oh well, that's strange isn't it look the key color is still coming through as 40 on that one for some reason. Oh well we'll worry about that later. Uh, something else you'll notice is we're seeing 125 and 127 there's no 126 that's because we're just looking at the white key function. Okay so let's start drawing this. So we're going to start with a simple version and it's going to gradually get a bit more complex. So we'll start by getting the area 
of our key into a variable called a. This is something I always do in my look and feel functions just because if we have to write out the area several times in other places it's much easier to write a than obj.area. Next we're going to set the colour. So we're going to make a variable called colour and that's going to be equal to obj.keyColor. And then we're going to have an if statement and we're going to say if the colour is equal to that hex value that we put in earlier, this one here, or actually in fact we could just put zero. So if the colour is zero and we can simplify this even more, we can say if not colour. So that's the really reduced version of this. So if the key is transparent then we can choose what colour we want. So we're going to have colour equals colours dot. I'm going to go with antique white, but this could be any colour you want. And then we'll go g dot set colour. And that's just going to be our colour variable. And then g dot fill triangle. We'll put a and for the angle, which is in radians, we'll just put zero for now. And I'll hit F5, and there's our triangles. So we're not quite the same as the example yet, because the example, if I bring that over, we've got much smaller keys here, so we need to adjust our area. So for our area, we're going to have A0, so the X position we're not changing. Then for the Y position, we're going to take the height and we're going to subtract the height divided by 3. For the width we're just going to have the width of the key, but you could change that if you wanted. And for the height we're going to have the height divided by 3 again. So what we're doing here is the height of our triangle is going to be the total height of the key divided by 3 and then we're subtracting the height of our triangle from the height of the key so it will place it at the bottom of the keyboard. So we'll hit F5 and you'll see what happens. There we go. Okay, now I'm not actually sure why we've got this black background here. That shouldn't be there. So I'm just going to take a quick look. Oh, it seems to be because I didn't set default appearance to false. I thought I did. Um, so this, let's pull this out so we can see it properly. So this one used flat style, that needs to be true. And now if I hit compile over here, so yeah, that, that's all right. And I usually also change this um, default appearance to false. Okay, so we've got rid of that background. That's good. And um, it is important that you get rid of the BG color value as well, because if you don't get rid of that, you will uh, still have a background there. Okay, so we want the exact same code for our black keys. So I'll just paste that in. But what I'm going to do is change this antique white to black. We're almost there. We need to flip these triangles round. Let's just zoom in because they're pretty small. So we need to flip these triangles round and move them to the top of the keyboard. So we can still see this is the whole height of the keyboard and those black triangles need to be at the top and rotated. So let's rotate them first of all. So where we're drawing the triangle, this last parameter is the angle, and that's in radians, but we're going to put it in degrees. So we'll do math dot two radians, and then we're going to flip it 180 degrees. So this will convert 180 degrees to the equivalent radians. If you know the radians value, you can just put the radians value in, but I work in degrees, so that's why I do it this way. So there we go, we flip them around, but they're still not at the top of the keyboard. So to get them to the top of the keyboard, we change this Y value here to, we could just put zero or we can put A1, which is the Y value we're getting from the area. And there we go. So now we've got them at the top of the keyboard. And if we shrink the keyboard, you can see everything sort of scales nicely and they stay in place. Okay, so that's the first part done. That's the basic version. And now if I play something on my MIDI keyboard, you'll see the keyboard at the top animate. 
but our keyboard doesn't animate because we haven't drawn any animation for it yet. So let's do that. So what I want to do when the keyboard is uh, receiving MIDI data is I want the keys to change appearance. So I want this area to change. So we're going to make a new variable. We're going to call it key area. And that's going to be equal to an empty array. And then I think we'll put it here. We're going to say if obj.down, so that means the key has been pressed, then the area, key area, is going to equal a. It's just going to be the entire height and width of the key. Otherwise, it's going to be what we've set up here. So we'll put key area equals that. And then we'll put key area in there. So now if I hit F5, now when I play on the keyboard, you can see because the key is down, obj.down, it takes on the full height and width of the keyboard keys. And if I press on them, oh, let's turn that off. And if I press the key as well, it triggers the same setting. It sets the obj.down to be uh, active. OK, and again, let's do the same thing for the black keys. So we'll need to create that new variable. Key area equals that. And then we just copy our little if statement down, place it here, and change the key area to be this key area. So now that should work for the black keys as well. Yeah, that's working nicely there. So we can actually simplify this a little bit. We don't actually need this full if statement with the else part because all we're doing here is setting key area to A. There's no reason we couldn't do that over here. Just set it to A there and then we don't need that at all. So we'll only need the else part of the if statement. So if we delete that, we just change this to if not obj.down and I'll hit F5 and you can see we get exactly the same behavior. So we'll do that same simplification to the black keys as well. So it's looking out for little things like this where you can simplify your code is quite nice uh, because this doesn't reduce the readability but it just means you've got less lines of code. Okay, so that's working. We press keys on the keyboard and we click on keys and they change. So that is nice. So the next thing we need to do is when we hover over, you can see that changes color up here. We, we should have some indication on our keyboard when we're hovering over the keys. I'm going to make these keys a bit wider actually as well. So let's just change that key width to, let's try 26, nice and wide. There we go. We can see those a bit better now. And let's change the low key so that we have our middle C a bit lower down. Okay, so we need an indication when our mouse is over the keys. So what I'm going to suggest is we change the transparency of these keys when the mouse is over. But there are other ways you could do this. Um, obviously with these ones it's changing colour. You could um, change, uh, you could add a gradient or something like that. There's all kinds of ways you can indicate that the mouse is over. We'll just change the opacity of these keys. So to do that, we'll do it here where we've got um, set key color. So we'll remove our color variable for now. And we're going to use a function called colors dot with alpha. And this takes two parameters. The first parameter is the color you want to use. So that's going to be our color variable. And the second parameter is the opacity. So if we have it as one, it will be fully opaque. And if I do something like 0.2, it's going to become more transparent. So I'll hit F5 and you see those keys are almost invisible now. And 0.5 brings a bit more opacity back to them. So we want to change this opacity based on the hover status, so obj.hover. So we could do an if statement, if obj.hover equals true, do one opacity, if it's false, do another opacity. Uh, but that's a few lines of code that we don't need. We can actually do it all on this one line. 
So what I like to do in here is to use the ternary operator. So that's basically an if statement on a single line. So we do it like this. We can say obj dot over question mark. So that's like the if part. We're saying if obj dot over, and in this case, it's the same as equals one. So all this is saying is anything on the left hand side of the question mark, is that true or false? And if it's true, do this that's on the right hand side, and then we put a colon, and if it's false, it'll do whatever's on the right hand side of the colon. So here we're saying if the mouse is over, set the opacity to 0.5. If it's not over, then the opacity is 1. So I'll hit F5. And if we put our mouse over the keys, they are not changing, but they should. Oh, I see. So for buttons and things, it's obj.over. For keys, it's obj.hover. There we go, obj.hover. That's what I wanted. So when the mouse is over, it's 0.5. When it's not over, it's 1. And again, we'll do exactly the same thing for our black keys. So we'll just copy that and replace this line with that. Hit F5 and hovering over the black keys has the same effect. Now, here's something interesting. You can see that when my mouse is here, we're not actually over the triangles, but it still affects them. And if I click, it'll affect them. And that's because this is still the key area. It's just we're not drawing in it. It's invisible. So that's, I don't know if it's a downside, but that's one side effect of um, using the look and feel to customize the keyboard. Okay, now one last thing we need to do is when we click on these keys, because the mouse is still over, it's actually still got the transparency applied to it. See, it's not fully white as if it would be if I was just pressing it on my keyboard. So what we need to do is we need to say, if the key is down, then still be 100% opaque. And we can do that in our same little ternary operator thing we're doing here. The line's getting a bit long, but I think it's okay. We can just say, if hover and not obj dot down. So if we're hovering, but the key is not down, so like it is now, then it will be 0.5 opacity. But if the key is down, it'll be one, uh, it'll be an opacity of one, it'll be fully opaque. So that works. So we just need to, again, apply the same thing to the black keys. So just come here and put and obj dot down, uh, sorry, and not obj dot down. So that works. And that is the keyboard example pretty much complete. And of course, you can do a more conventional keyboard. You don't have to do something with triangles like this. Or yeah, you can do whatever you want. If you want to get the snippet for this, I'm posting it for my higher tier patrons at patreon.com, link in the video description. And I'm also going to post a little extra video there showing a sort of random thing you can do with these keys to uh, make them all face in different directions, which I think is quite cool. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them below the video. Click the subscribe button if you haven't already and share the video with anybody you think might like it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.